So uh, one of the uh, interesting things is over the years, we've um, tried to develop better parts and better ways of doing it. One, Charlie Litton was one of the early process people with his uh, glass lathe and his vacuum systems of trying to do things better than it was done before. So uh, Paul uh, worked on a program to improve the early SLAC uh, klystrons. Alan, can you pass him sure. down the microphone? I'm going to want him to say something about this. But basically, it was a small company here in the Bay Area uh, working <coughs> on improving the manufacture of those klystrons. Uh, can you, why don't you sit down and, or okay. get close to the microphone at least and tell us a little bit about uh, what you, how you got involved. He never worked at Slack, but he worked on some of those devices. Yeah. Um, the company I worked for was called Everco. Um, it was a company that was founded by my uncle, so I worked there during, uh, as a machinist, uh, during, while well, I was going to college. I put myself through college that way. Um, one of the things that um, my uncle, w when he started the company, he was actually at Varian Associates, and he was a, uh, what they call a hydroform operator. Um, the one thing I want to do is, is, is apologize. I didn't realize it was good, this was going to be such a big group. Uh, otherwise, I would have brought more slides to kind of intro the, the process. But anyway, the, the hydroform was a process by which it replaces punch press forming of metal. Hydroform uses a, a rubber diaphragm and a male, uh, and a male part which draws the, uh, actually you sandwich the uh, material that you're going to draw between the rubber diaphragm and the meal piece and it draws up and forms a part. So my uncle was interested in hydroform. He, got, he kind of fell in love with it and he started playing with it and he did a lot of um, tube work or the pieces for the electron tubes for Varian. Then we went off and started doing his own work. He did a lot of different other kinds of projects. And one day apparently um, a Varian, uh, I mean Bob Bosenberg found out from, um, who was at Slack at the time, found out from Varian um, that um, somebody else was building decent or high quality metal parts for their tubes. And the, uh, the klystrons at Slack were failing. And it was failing because of a cathode support, um, was the thermal shock and it was breaking down. And they were losing the tubes. They couldn't get the power out or the lifetime out. So one of the projects was for my uncle to start developing a, a better uh, cathode support. It's made out of 18,000 stainless steel. And so he said, OK. Because he wasn't you know, formally educated, he said you know, he could do anything once. <laughs> so um, we started this process of developing. Um, this was back in about the 1972. So it was a, a <coughs> uh, improvement project. So essentially, the previous process was about 12 draws and multiple annealers. So essentially, you take a sheet of metal oh, and... Uh, okay. You essentially take a sheet of metal. This starts off as a sheet of metal. This is three draws already. Uh, I don't have the other two draws because um, it got lost in translation. It's been a number of years. Um, so this is basically three draws. And then the next draw... So each draw is essentially you take the shape and draw a, a vertical line up from a diameter, and then that determines wh how many draws that occur. That's the next draw. This is the next draw. This is the next draw. And remember, between each one of these draws, it has to be sent back and then fully annealed, so it's soft. This is the next draw. This is the next draw. Now we're getting close to the shape. Getting pretty smooth. Yeah. You still got, and then they finally do a, a super coin and to make this. And these are failing because of all these different creases and lines in, in, within the, the metal. <coughs> so as part of my little project, um, we developed a process to do it in three draws. So you can actually see what happens to the metal. So this is draw one, and it's and this is stainless. It goes back for a kneel. This is draw two. This is the third draw. 
and you avoided all those creases and yeah, and yeah. That's you. So the yields went up so high that we been eventually built a run of these, in, and that was it. We stopped building them. Then <laughs> 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 set ourselves out of a job. But essentially, but essentially, um, it's it's quite a jump. Um, we found out that it was quite a quite a major improvement for the the longevity and the power of the two because just because of the change in the manufacturing process that eliminated these kinds of problems. So, so extrapolating on that, we've seen this in the 30s, 40s, and 50s around here. All these little shops, little companies supporting each other and pushing the technology forward. We saw that in back in Varian's day. Uh, we saw it at Hewlett Packard. We saw it at a lot of different places. And it was things like this that made these tubes more reliable. The original RCA tubes weren't that reliable, and ITEL and McCullough got together and made some good high-frequency reliable tubes, better processing, uh, and so on. And so we not only had the Klystrons that Dick worked on, the ones that were installed in SLAC, but they kept improving over the years. SLAC had a machine shop, and they made their own Klystrons for many years. <coughs> we're now going to talk, uh, thank you, Paul, very much for joining us. <laughs> I have to at least mention Burton Richter, who couldn't be here tonight. A couple of weeks ago, he was planning to be here, but he uh, some medical issues came up, and he's not able to, to come. But he's the one that persuaded Panofsky to join Slack. Pass me that. That's good. Uh, he persuaded uh, Panofsky to join Slack back in '63. Uh, he was involved with the Spear experiment, the uh, one, the Stanford positron electron asymmetric ring, and. Um, developed this, d discovered the J-Psi meson, which was discovered concurrently elsewhere, uh, but the Nobel Prize was awarded to him in 1976, and he uh, sends his regards. The uh, Stanford Linear Accelerator has a milestone. We talked about them earlier tonight. This is an ASME IEEE milestone plaque up at uh, the Linear